So hey there, everyone. Um, one of the things that we do with uh, our, our conferences and a lot of the blog posts and that what we do all kind of look at the effects and the benefits of the ketogenic diet and the low carb diet with respect to diabetes management and cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's and all these chronic diseases. And one of the things that, that is less harped upon, I think, uh, up till now at least uh, from our side, is the, the huge benefits that we, can, we, that we see with uh, elevated ketones um, with respect to uh, in inflammation and pain management. And I have today with me um, Tyler Ritchie, and he has an incredible story of, of you know, based a huge accident that he had and, and how he is um, utilizing this diet to help manage the, the issues that he has. So um, we're going to think I'd start out and let him uh, tell his story, and then hopefully that'll prompt a couple of questions towards, towards the end of this interview. So Tyler, go for it. Tell everybody um, your story, what happened to you, and, and um, how you've been managing it. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Doug. Uh, so I guess to start off is I got really involved in this lifestyle starting 17 years ago. I was 21 years old. I was actually living in Mexico at the time. And uh, one morning we had set out um, and while we were on the freeway, our car broke down. And as our car broke down, we all got out as with a, a couple of friends of mine. And I was living in Mexico at the time, so we were down south, Mexico City type area. And as we got out and began to cross the freeway looking for help, I was hit by a car. Um, the car itself was going about 80 miles an hour, took me 300 feet. Um, and I was on life support for a few days. I was in a coma for a few days after that and had woken up really to the realization of what had happened. I, don't remember anything and the the individuals i was with they had told me what had happened and i lost my leg on the spot uh below my knee so i i was i instantly became an amputee and then when i had woken up several days later i realized i was in a, almost a complete body cast uh i was out for about a week total and it had been during that time that they had done um, about 14 or 15 major surgeries um, with metal plates and steel rods in both arms, both legs, uh, kind of piecing me back together. And so after I woke up, I kind of realized what had happened. Uh, you know, I was 21 at the time. You kind of realize, I, I don't know if I could have known at the time the road that, that was ahead of me, but uh, thankfully I, I had great care down there. Uh, after I was stable enough, I was brought back to the States. I'm from Arizona, still live in Arizona. And that's where I really got involved in my current profession, which is artificial limbs, uh, prosthetics, and uh, different types of orthopedic bracing. But I got fit for prosthetic, uh, kind of relearned how to walk. I healed from a lot of my other injuries. And now, 17 years later, I've had well over about 80 or 90 different procedures and surgeries ranging from joints being replaced to spine surgeries and to other less non-invasive procedures, but um, well over 80 or 90 times where I've had to be put out for something. And so that's been a, it's been a process. It's been 17 uh, long years in that regard, but there have been many benefits that have come from it mainly my profession, uh, the individuals I know, amputees that I've got to work with, some that have come back from Iraq, others here more local. It's been a phenomenal blessing to work with amputees all over the country. And even more recently, just, um, you know, some of the things I'm getting involved in now, I think it's safe to say that though there were several doors that closed because of my accident. Uh, you know, you can't have that many surgeries and not have to kind of rein in a few things, be it sports or, or something else. But um, many more doors have opened to me because of, of what had happened. And so that, that's kind of the story really, Doug, in a nutshell uh, that happened 17 years ago and that has kind of spurred 
um, the lifestyle that I'm living, the profession that I'm in, you know, uh, it wasn't about a year after my accident. I met my wife on a blind date. We have four kids now. Um, so in, in many regards, I've been very blessed, but that accident has really, I mean, it's just, it's part of my life. There's not a day, um, or an hour that goes by where I'm not in some sort of pain. Um, it's just what really what it is is how much pain I'm in. I have some great days, but the pain's always there. And so it's definitely something that that I live with. It's something that's a part of me and it's something I deal with on a daily basis. So so tell me then um you you uh embarked on on this uh, a ketogenic or a low carb lifestyle in order to to manage this pain uh, that right. you that you've been dealing with so to tell us more about that so um that uh, so about a year and a half ago um i was having probably a procedure if not two a month you know and, and this is all in the process of you know working full time trying to provide for my family uh, i was finishing my doctorate at the time uh, in business, you know, surgeries, doctorate, work, you know, it just it started taking its toll. And although that in itself was crazy, what made all of it next to impossible was just pain. You know, I, I rarely can sleep well, uh, you know, trying to write a dissertation for a doctorate or, or trying to see patients or trying to be a good father and a husband while you got this pain screaming at you in the background is... Uh, you know, it's just not something you ever get used to. You get better at it. You get try. You, you do get better at compartmentalizing things, but um, it is hard. And so, about a year and a half ago, I, uh, after I think, kind of expressing some of my frustrations to some physicians that have done wonderful things for me, and that have really helped bring some of that pain down, I was then curious. Well, what about still the rest? I mean, is this the best it's going to get? And a lot of the answers I got was, yeah. I mean, you were hit by a car going 80 miles an hour. There's really only so much we can do, and there are things we can fix. But, you know, your body was went through a lot of trauma, and you're going to have to live with a lot of that. So now I'm 37 years old and 38 years old, and I, I just I came home at, uh, after that meeting with a couple of doctors that day and just realized that I, I had to do something different. I had to. So I took a month and I read every book I could get my hands on in regards to the problems that I have. I read books on nutrition, books on diet, books on inflammation, um, revisited my anatomy and physiology books. I, I kept thinking there's got to be something I can personally do um, to help some of this. And it was during that time I actually came across uh, uh, Keto, uh, I don't know if it's Keto Clarity, I think it was, by Jimmy Moore, and um, it had just come out, and I, I think what, I had, what had happened is I had read up on this diet, and the first thing I read that one of the benefits was inflammation, and I thought, I don't care if I had to eat rocks every day from here on out, if it helps inflammation, I'm in. I, I, it just had gotten so bad. It, didn't, it wasn't about food anymore. I mean, it was about, I will do whatever it takes to feel less pain. And, you know, so I read about many different diets and many different ways of eating and ways of life that were healthier. And this ketogenic one was the one that stuck out to me. Um, and to boot, it seemed like it was great food. It seemed something that could be very doable for me. And, um, Although again, I admit it, it didn't matter what food it was at that point. If it worked, I was willing to. I was willing to live any lifestyle, eat whatever I had to eat, to be, to have less pain and to be a better husband, father, employee, student, brother, all these things. And so, I came across the ketogenic lifestyle, Doug, and started a year and a half ago. And, you know, I, I think. You know, it's one thing for me to say I'm in less pain. It's one thing to say that the pain is a lot more manageable now than it used to be. But interestingly enough, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had my uh, uh, my CRP levels checked. My C-reactive protein levels were checked, and uh, 
in the year and a half that I've started this, a year and a half ago, they were high, even a tad elevated. And a couple of weeks ago, they were next to non-existent. Um, my CRP levels, I think, were 0.2. Um, and I think a year and a half ago, it was two point something. And so not only was it measurable what had happened, but I feel better. Now, am I still in pain? Absolutely. And there are certain things that I've come to, to realize that will be a part of this. But uh, when you tell someone in chronic pain, you know, you'll have this forever, but what if we can make it manageable? What if you could live your life and retain some of that quality? I think any of them would say, hey, I'll keep the pain, but if I can have those things, whatever it takes. And that's really what my life, that's really what my life has been more so this last year as I've gotten well into it is the pain's there, um, it still exists. I still do procedures every once in a while, uh, but it is for the most part, it's manageable. Uh, it's easier to smile, it's easier to get up in the morning. Um, do I wish all the pain would go away? Sure. But that's, that's not realistic. But what is, is uh, this lifestyle. It's done wonders for me. I, I love it. I live it, you know, and um, I've continued to learn more about it. I've continued to read and continue to learn more um, to kind of better myself. But it's been, it's been quite the blessing. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So um, in, in the, 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 the studying and, and stuff that you've, that, and all the reading that you've been doing about this, where do they say that the um, this pain management or reduction in pain or reduction in inflammation comes from? Is it is it the the ketones themselves that are that are helping with that? Is it just the anti-inflammatory effects of not having a bunch of carbohydrates in your diet? Um, is it a combination of both? What do you, what have you learned about that? Well, so I, I've I've learned that it can be both, and I've learned. I think what is difficult, if not impossible, is attributing maybe percentage wise, which one of those it is, um, or, you know, 50%, is it the fact that I have no sugar that's, that's doing this? Is it the ketones or the elevated ketones? You know, it's kind of hard to tell, but I will say as the person who, who lives in this body, that I feel my best when I have that no sugar, low carbs part set and I have elevated blood ketone levels. Um, that is when personally I feel in less pain. That is when I get the most done. Um, and so whether physicians or, I mean, what, what's even crazy is when I first started this, you know, my cholesterol levels went up. And so I had several physicians saying, this is ridiculous. Stop the diet. Don't do this. This is, you know, and now, you know, and trying to put me on a statin drug at 37 years old. And, and, you know, I had read enough and, you know, I really do try to educate myself. I don't like, you know, my body's way too fragile for me to guess and to, you know, just take a bunch of risks. So I really do have to educate myself and had done so. So when the physician said that, I said, look, these are my thoughts. This is what I've read. Um, let me do this. Let's check my blood. Let's do our due diligence every other month. And, you know, of course, the levels came way down. My, you know, and he was the one that checked my blood and saw my inflammation drop. And so, you know, I think doctors specifically have a much harder time pinpointing what exactly is the, the, the mechanism for the reduced inflammation. Uh, but I will say with complete confidence it is no sugar it's the low carbs and it's this other aspect of of elevated ketone levels um, because i'm not always in ketosis and so but i still feel great you know i still feel better and so you have to kind of say to yourself well if i'm not always in ketosis and, and i check my blood regularly and i i use level i i check my my blood my or my breath acetone levels and so you know, I'm not always in, in ketosis, but I still feel good. I, I think the trifecta for me is being in ketosis the majority of the time and living the low carb lifestyle. That is when my pain is the absolute lowest. And it is when I am moving the best I've moved in 17 years. So have you um, experimented at all with, with exogenous ketones? Because 
I know there's a lot of, of um, research being going on um, where they're doing clinical trials, double blind, all sorts of trials um, for the benefits of um, exogenous ketones on people suffering from epilepsy, um, other uh, TBI and um, uh, Alzheimer's. Um, and I haven't heard of anything with, with, re with respect to inflammation and pain management. So have you tried them at all? Have you, have you I've tried anything all about of them. that? Um, you know, I, I have tried all of them. I, I love experimenting. And, you know, if not for myself, I love experimenting for other people because um, I'm in a physical situation that many people are not in. And I kind of view it as an opportunity to learn something for maybe others that are in pain um, that suffer. And so I really do try to experiment. I try different things. I've tried, uh, I have probably eight or 10 different kinds of exogenous ketones in my cabinet. Now, in, in terms of, you know, I will say the only benefit that I've ever experienced in reduced pain with exogenous ketones um have been with the almost straight um bhb salts and they're beyond vile <laughs> it's it's hard because when i do those i i do experience uh, just that optimal feeling i, I do experience and i'm not saying they reduce my pain but i feel better okay. um the you know the one that i've been able to stomach the best that i feel like isn't full of you know be, you know artificial sweeteners and tastes great but isn't exactly straight you know uh, jet fuel is the keto force um and i usually do a couple capfuls of that with some lemon um and and i and i do i feel more optimal with that the exogenous ketones that are that we're seeing more now they taste better, uh, though I'm not sure. I mean, I'm positive they don't produce the same results as the more concentrated, no artificial sweetener, uh, jet fuel type uh, exogenous ketones. But I've tried to try them all. I've tried to experiment. You know, now some of them even have the added caffeine. You know, I think uh, we've taken a lot of those exogenous ketones and we've uh, modernized them to the best of our ability and making them taste like uh, candy and, and uh, adding some caffeine. But the old school uh, exogenous ketones are the ones that have helped me the most. Wow, that's really interesting. That's awesome, Tyler. So um, you said that at the beginning that you've um, been doing a lot of work with um, artificial limbs and stuff. Have you, um, are, are you doing any work um, with those people or with that, that community at all with respect to other, like helping other people adopt this, um, this lifestyle or this diet to try to help them? Or is it mainly um, your work with the artificial limbs themselves? You know, it, it's, it's mainly my work with artificial limbs. I you know that's actually something I've struggled with uh, in terms of how far do I go uh, helping these individuals because uh, I'm not a doctor um, right. my degrees in artificial limbs and prosthetics you know my doctorate is in business not food and or, or nutrition or or medical so I, I do struggle with that because I, I don't really have and I'm not saying having credentials makes makes you the expert as I've seen that in many cases not to be uh, true, especially in regards to nutrition. Right. Um, I also have to be careful about overstepping that line. I mean, they come in, they get artificial limbs. Um, it's hard because I, I feel better. You want when you feel good when something works, you you want to share it. You want you want everybody to know about it. And most of the patients I see, I've been through everything they've been. Through. You know, I've had most of their surgeries, and so I, I understand. And when they come in complaining about pain, or you know, I, I always suggest different things, and I'll always ask them what they're eating, and if they ever thought about looking into their diet, or eliminating sugars, or you know, I'll always comment and make uh, 
suggestions, but doing so in a professional setting, I haven't done that. Now, would I love to do it more than anything? But um, I was just talking to a good friend, colleague uh, that's in this field um, that's with Level um, about going about that and looking into coaching or nutrition or a certificate or, you know, just to make it a little bit more uh, to add some validity to, to some of the things. Because on a personal level, I've probably helped 30, 40 people. Um, get into either a ketogenic lifestyle or low carb or a modified ketogenic mm-hmm. uh, diet. And that I love their friends, their family, they've got issues, health issues, they're overweight, whatever it might be. Many knowing my, my story and knowing some of the changes that I've made um, come to me. I mean, if not daily, every other day or so, I'll get that text. And, and that's more of a testament to the lifestyle because it's not that I'm out there telling everybody, but most people that know me, Doug, know that, you know, I was, I wasn't really ever heavy, but I, I was heavier. You know, you get all those surgeries, you, you have all those things. People know I'm in pain. People know they just, there's this general sense of what's going on. But over the last year and a half, you get a lot more, hey, you're happier. Hey, you look better. You look leaner. Mm-hmm. You look, you know, what do you, you know, everyone wants to know. Because if not uh, everyone, most everyone is dealing with something and in their life, if not physically um, with disease or diet. And so I do get quite a few of my friends and families and Facebook requests asking, hey, I heard you mention this the other day. I know your case is extreme, so man, that must be something. Can you please share it with me or can you please help me? And so I do a lot of that. Um, And of course, I just kind of do it because I love it. I don't, there's no professional fee or no, none of that. Just uh, helping others feel and experience the benefits I have. Yeah, I feel like... um that part of, of what you do is, is going to grow because there, as you mentioned just now, there, there's such a need out there. Um, it, it, almost everybody has some issue that they're dealing with, whether it's just general health or some disease, chronic disease or whatever that they're dealing with. So how do people find you if they, um, maybe I'm throwing you under the bus here, but I think you should tell people, I, I think a lot of people are going to be fascinated with your story and, and, and your journey and um, if they'd like to connect with you how can they how can they get hold of you you know um, I actually don't know uh, Facebook's the easiest way then, uh, you know, I've had a lot of suggestions and a lot of people have been trying to encourage me to, to write a blog uh, my sister's in the blogging world and has you know 40, 50,000 followers, but it's cooking <laughs> and it's cooking and, and recipes that don't <laughs> follow my <laughs> lifestyle, but uh, luscious desserts uh, full of sugar. And she does very well. And, and she's even offered to, to help me do that. Uh, you know, I've, I've been toying with a lot of different things and ideas and ways, because what I will say is the, the joy uh, in helping other people uh, achieve less pain or a higher quality of life. I've been doing it for 17 years with prosthetics. You know, having people wheel in my office without a leg and then walk out, there's just something that comes with that that, um, that has helped me deal with my own challenges and, and struggles physically. And so, you know, I, I will say that I have done my very best to research everything I possibly can. I try to read a new book every week in regards to this. I just finished a book on branch chain amino acids, most boring book I've ever read in my life, but there is some great information there. And the more I learn, the more I do feel like I want to share a lot of that Um, because I've been able to, what most people I think have a hard time doing because maybe they don't have as many issues, but I, I experiment. I've tried every supplement on the planet. I've tried every vitamin. I've tried nootropics. I've tried, I've looked into those. I've wrote a research paper on them. I've, I've looked into everything I possibly can to optimize my body. And I've learned a lot. I've learned 
you know, I've learned that there is no one size fits all. I've learned that there is no one diet for everybody. Uh, you know, I know some people are actually surprised sometimes when I say that, but it, you know, just because it's changed me and, and helped me, that doesn't always necessarily mean that it's the right fit for another individual. Though I do believe there are certain guiding principles that are, I believe everybody would benefit from less sugar, if not, and you know, no sugar. Okay. That, that's a, that's a fact. That's now would everyone benefit from a ketogenic diet? Maybe, but it's, it's hard to follow. And you know, it's, 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 as I've watched other family and friends, they don't have the same motivating factors that I do. They keep me in line with it. I mean, if you looked at food and knew that that was going to give you pain, many people would have an easier time saying no. And so I will say that I, I have some extra motivation to live disciplined in that regard but um you know I, i'm toying around with a few things but for now honestly i'm on facebook uh, that's about the only medium i'm on and i'm, I'm happy to answer questions and I've been doing this for about 15 months that'd again, be great so so how do they find you on facebook is it just if they search for tyler ritchie have you got a uh... yeah so tyler ritchie r-i-t-c-h-e-y um not too many of those out there that, that spell it like that but uh, anyone that has any questions in regards to diet inflammation, what I've tried and what's worked and what hasn't happy to share whatever, uh, whatever I can. And that is probably for now, the best way to reach me. Okay, great. I'll probably put this, this uh, video interview into, into a blog post on our site and I'll, in the blog, I'll, I'll give people a link if they want to, um, please you and, be great. And ask you some questions. Done deal. That's awesome, man. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, Tyler. And uh, good luck with everything you're doing. Hopefully, we see you at, a, at an event. Maybe we can even get you to do a, a breakout talk or something in, in uh, July in, in our San Diego event. Um, I'd be happy to do whatever I can to help out. Okay. I appreciate the, the time, Doug. And again, feel free to reach out. I, I'm here. Um, you know, uh, I am in this profession and it's, it's been good to me and I've been able to kind of, you know, my schedule is really my own in many ways and I'm, I'm happy to help out in, in any way that I can. That's brilliant. Awesome. Thanks again. We'll speak to you hey, soon. Hey, thanks, Doug. You have a great day, man. Bye.